Hi, this is Paul Thompson from Spitfire Audio. This is going to be the first in a series of walkthroughs showing um, a few of the features of Sable when using Volume 1 and Volume 2 together. So we've got the full kind of string band up and running here. Um, you'll notice a few things. Um, uh, we've got the mic sliders here as usual and I've got all my articulations laid up. The first thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to show you I've got everything switched on, I've got it on the same MIDI, MIDI channel. So without kind of changing the ranges or anything, I'm just literally going to bash away at every single section on the spiccato patch. And I'm going to sh do this really to show you the difference between the different mics. So here's a good kind of, uh, a good kind of balance setup. I'm, I'm controlling the um, sliders actually from my iPad at the moment. So um, we've got the close mics and the tree mics, so it kind of sounds like this. So one thing is um, you might hear, I've got my screencast software running in the background as well. So you might um, hear as we get more and more voice intensive, a few pops and clicks every so often, which is kind of, which is the processor really overloading as it's running the recording and the uh, contact instance at the same time. So let's try having a listen to the close on its own. And then if we go up high, Um, you can hear that you've got a very tight, a very immediate and vibrant sound up there. With the Decca Tree, you get this this sound. So that's a, a really good kind of basis sound to use. I mean, I tend to, in my own mock-ups, what I tend to do is I tend to start with just that mic loaded. Um, you know that kind of er everyone is sitting in the right position. You know, you're going to hear a really nice sound of the room as well as the players. And it just all sounds great. Everything kind of blends together really fantastically when you've got that, just that mic up. It's great for writing on a laptop as well. Um, here we go with the ambient mics. So those are higher up than the tree, that you can hear that they have a very different sound. They're much more reverberant sounding. Um, and the outriggers are a kind of a, a device to add width to the tree. They're, they're mics that are on the si same vertical plane as the tree, but they're further spaced apart. So you can hear this gives you a much more stereo image. And then you can you can blend those mics. I mean, this is just the main mic section. We've obviously got um, three more alternate mics, which are the alternate close, the um, which is the ribbon mic. We've got the stage mics, which is an, a stereo pair that are kind of alternative to the tree, and then we've got the gallery mics, which are very very reverberant. Great for that kind of um, distant, you know, music playing in the distance in the in the cathedral or whatever. Fantastic sound that is. Um, but using these colors you can get you can hone in and get exactly the sound that you want it's really very very powerful um, and you're not messing around with reverbs endlessly and trying to get things to sound right this it sounds right because it this is the way that it's recorded um, for for film scores you know um, tracking sessions the hall is a very very um, well known and and well used location for scoring sessions for um, you know pop and rock sessions as well. So it's a fabulous, fabulous room. The players are all incredible, top-notch players, um, all first call people uh, in the UK. So, you know, the, you, you're getting um, an amazing sound, the wood of the instruments that they're using, the, um, you know, the, the room, the recording chain is an incredible path, you know, through the these mics and then through the, the Neve Montserrat preamps into the desk, it's a Neve 88R, and then you know we're recording to tape, and then from tape we go to Pro Tools, we go through the prisms, um, and everything is um, you know it's, it's kind of very high def, and then and then the final product is 48k 24 bit, which is which is good for your uh, system resources. So anyway, let's go um, in and look at something. Um, I'll tell you what we'll do, let us load up, we'll go back to the tree, I'll just stick the tree up if, at full, and I'm going to turn, oops, I'm going to turn off the um, celli and the basses, and then we'll listen to the violin ones, violas, and the um, violin twos, 
uh, oh sorry I <laughs> just realized I locked the articulations earlier just to stop myself from accidentally hitting key switches let's unlock them all very very cool little collection of tools we've got down here um, which you can read about in the manual. The manual you can download if you're interested to have a look. It's it's linked up on our website. Anyway, so let's look at Legato. Um, right, tree mics up. Um, I'm controlling the uh, dynamic from the mod wheel here, and let's just, without further ado, let's just have a listen, and and you can have a listen, see what what you think. So the first thing to notice is that I've got the speed slider right up to the top. Now this makes a huge difference if you want to um, if you want to pull this around during what I, what I tend to do is I have one finger on the mod wheel and one finger on the speed slider. Now the advantage of that is if you listen to these two transitions, I'll play softly to get the um, to get the transition to be um, there are the three transitions. If you play on the keyboard softly, you get a portamento transition then the majority of the middle of the range is a normal bowed fing sorry a normal fingered transition where there's just a finger change the bow state carries on moving and then the top of the velocity range if you play hard you get um, it switches to a bowed transition so you hear a bow change in the transition so but just to demonstrate the speed slider if i play this um, twice i'll play so you hear that it's a nice subtle um, portamento if i pull the speed slider right down you hear two things you hear first of all um, as the players are getting ready to move you hear that slight bump that happens as they as they kind of realize that they've got to pull their finger all the way up to the next note and then you hear the full amount of the transition so this is it's slightly laggier to play um, because obviously when you change note you're hearing more of the actual recording of the players changing note so the note change itself will happen slightly later so that's one thing that you need to bear in mind but I mean you get you can it's a it's an instrument that you can practice you get very used to um, you know to working out how soon you need to hit the key to make um, to make the transition happen at the right time but you can to, to kind of show you how it works in practice I can I'll just play something and I'll alter the speed as I'm going watch the speed slider So, pretty incredible amount of sound control right under your fingertips there. Um, you can pretty much do, you can, we, the way that we think about, about this, the way that we try and build these libraries is we want them to be playable. Um, now, I know that that doesn't work for everybody. Some people want to sit and, and step change things in, step sequence things in. Some people use, um, you know, Sibelius or uh, notation programs like that to, to put their stuff in. And that's you know that's just a, a, a different methodology but quite a lot of people play stuff in whether you use a wind um, controller or whether you just use your keyboard you use your iPad you use your mod wheels all that kind of stuff and so we want it to be playable we want you to be able to learn how to play it and to be able to then create any kind of transition you want to any kind of shape any kind of crescendos, diminuendos, all of that kind of stuff. We don't want you to have to sit putting things together like a jigsaw puzzle. That's absolutely not what we want here. We make stuff um, primarily and utterly selfishly for ourselves. <laughs> we, make, we want it to work the way that we like to work. And then we just kind of try and add in as much extra functionality to make it work for as many people as possible. But the primary focus is always going to be um, sitting at the keyboard, just trying to create maybe you've written something on a chart and you're you're keying it in that's absolutely great as well but we want it to be we want it to respond to you it's an instrument we want you to be able to play it and to be able to get a full range of um, sound out of it so um let's let's dial in on some of these instruments so um let's go into the violin twos we're going to change it up so that we have a nice bit of close mic and just a little bit of tree maybe sort of kind of half tree and I'm gonna I'm gonna again play the um, the legatos here and just have a listen to this. Uh, 
So that's a very, very exposed, very close mic sound. Let's try changing this up now. Let's pull the close mics down. Um, let's push the tree up a tiny bit and let's add in some ambient. So this is, this is a different sound again now. I'll carry on wheeling the speed and mod, try and play something interesting. Here we go. Okay, so you can hear, I mean, with all of these different things, you can hear that you've got a, a good palette of sound to be able to change in there. Interesting to hear the violin ones and violin twos together. So let's change things up again. Let's pull that down. Actually, let's just listen to the close mics. Quite a lot of people like to, to get a nice close sound and then mess around with it. Absolutely great for, for kind of pop production and, and things like that. So. Let's have a quick listen to that. So you can hear in there you've got um, you know you've you've got a nice tight sound. You really can't hear that much of the hall in there. Um, very directional. Uh, in fact you could even go further you could use the mic positions control for the close mic and you can put this literally wherever you want in the stereo field reduce it to mono pan it somewhere absolutely no problem that's very easy to do um, let's quickly have a listen to the tree mics on their own So there's a, a quick overview of that. I am aware that I'm gonna, I'm actually starting to uh, witter on endlessly. I don't want this to be an hour long video. So I'm gonna do a couple more things and then I'm gonna tune out so that I can get this up, up online. And I'll, I'll put a few different ones up with different kind of things. So let's look at the, um, at the low end. We've got everything muted up there, great. So let's have a listen to the cellos and the basses playing together. Now, one thing which is kind of handy on here, I want these to play at the same. Um, there's, there's an endless debate: where should the basses be? Should they go right down to the bottom of an 88-note keyboard, so that's the lowest C on that keyboard, um, or should they appear so that when you're playing the MIDI in and you give that chart to the orchestrator, um, they appear at the written pitch? So because basses the sound an octave lower than they're written. Now, one of the things about making them appear at the written pitch, which you do by um, if I highlight this, you'll see the, the basses here. Um, let's get them into the range. Watch what happens. I've checked the radio button. I'm going to click and drag, and I'm going to whack that up an octave. So I've um, set the transpose so that the notes move up. So it's trans. In other words, when I press this one, it transposes it down to there and plays that sample. Um, you'll see also up here that we. I've got my. Um, I've just crashed into the. Um, into the round robin uh, things up here, but I'm not too worried about that because I'm not going to be playing up there. But we can move those around. That's that's pretty straightforward to be able to move those around. Yes. So so now when I play, you'll see that the celli, um, a huge range of the celli by the way. You'll see that the celli and the basses are now sitting down here in the same range, so I can play them both together. So without further ado, actually I'll leave the speed slider up. I'm just going to change the mod wheel. So have a listen. So that's a nice old rich sound. Oops, I should be using my sliders to change this. Let's put the close mics in um, and have a listen now. So 
So pretty cool there. You can uh, get a nice load of bow changing going on. You get some really diggy sounds down there. And you've got, again, the same kind of stuff. Um, let's load up the spiccatos again. And in fact, no. Uh, yes, yes. Quick spiccato uh, demo of, of the different mic positions, just on its own. Um, and we're playing, don't forget now, we're playing the cellos and the basses in octaves. Um, so let's have a look at um, whatever else we've got. We've got some staccatos, a bit more leisurely. And then we've got um, pizzicatos. I'm getting going to get carried away on the basses now. So you get the idea. I mean, there's loads of great stuff in here. I mean, just trims. Mod wheel operated, goes from whisper quiet. And then if you really want to ramp it up. Some really great stuff in there. Um, Colinios, I must stop. Colinios. Okay, you get the idea. Loads of great stuff in there, so let's turn those off and go back up here. Um, what about the violas and the violins? Now, I want to hear them in octaves, so I'm going to try... Um, let's do this. Let's put the... Let's put the... Um, the violas down an octave. So the, so the violin twos will be playing an octave up from the violas. So here we go. Let's have a listen. Obviously we're going to we need to play within the range that you can hear both instruments. So that's up from C. C will be the bottom note, middle C. So you can hear really beautiful, beautiful sound. Um, let's put our violas back to the normal place. We've got one, two, three uh, octaves and a, and a major third up there. Really fabulous, fabulous range. Beautiful, beautiful sound. In fact, let's try just for fun. Let's go in. We're still just on the tree mics. Again, it's the old workhorse. Um, we love the tree mics. Let's go in for some for some soft stuff. I'm going to wiggle the vibrato slider now. We're going to and the mod wheel as well. And we're going to hear. I'm kind of cheating. I should really be playing this in three separate passes. But let's hear what they all sound like playing three part chords. Um, I'm kind of I'm riding it in the way that I like I like to hear it grow louder and bloom into vibrato you know you don't have to do it that way let's do it the other way so let's go from a, a very stark um, loud non vib note a chord and then as it gets quieter if I can coordinate my fingers correctly we will bring in the um, the vibrato so have a listen to this Whoops, <laughs> missed, <laughs> hit the wrong slider. Okay, here we go. So you can hear, wow, who knows? Let's pull in the close mics. In fact, let's just have the close mics. Let's just have the close mics. Now, have a listen to this. This is really super in your face. So 
so just endless fun endless fun um we should probably hear flautando um and let's go back to the tree for this in fact no let's go to ambient let's hear the ambient mics on the flautando just uh lovely lovely sound this is here we go So you get the idea, um, just so you can hear uh, <laughs> the tree, because uh, I do love this. Do you want to show this off? And of course, you can, you know, if you're only hearing one thing, just picking at random, um, let's hear the violin twos. Let's put in a bit of close mic as well. So you want to do a violin two line of flotando. And then if you want to compare that to the first flat hand though. let's have a listen to that one oh put close back in for them so you can hear a, a really uh, quite a big difference there the the it have you know it has a huge effect having the extra violin in in the V ones. Um, the V twos much more hesitant sounding um, with only three players. The violas. Um, if we go into the violas again, bring the close mics in and have a quick listen to these. So, you know, you can hear there as well, three players in the violas. It's um, when you add the whole thing together and kind of multiply it up, you get a much thicker, richer sound. So it's very scalable as well, very scalable. You play one single line on each of these parts, you'll get a very brittle, very beautiful, fragile sound. Um, but then you can load them all up and play it like a pad and you get a much richer, fuller sound. Even with the flautando, it still, it still sounds great. Really um, lovely stuff in there. So. Um, so let's just for fun, let's just play a few through a couple of the shorts. Whoops, I'm mixing up my shorts there. Um, Cold legs. So that's a quick hearing of those, the pizzicatos. And then we've got uh, our lovely consort shorts. So you get the idea there. Um, I don't really know what uh, I, I keep losing track of time. I really must bring this to a close. This this one. Let's just have a quick listen to the trams again. Whisper quiet for some stuff. And then, if you want to really push them up. fierce sound out of them so there we go let's leave it at that for now we've we've had a, a look through our 
our full section working together. I've picked some stuff and um, hopefully I've shown you enough for this first go through. We can go into more detail but if anybody wants to um, wants to hear anything in particular then just shoot us an email through the website or um, or you know post up on VI Control or somewhere like that and just let us know what you want to see. Um, we're really excited. In fact I'm going to be writing some demos um, over the next week with this and I just obviously haven't had a chance to do that yet <laughs> literally everything's been testing testing you know making tweaking all that kind of stuff so being able to actually write with it is going to be great fun and we've got a couple of friends who are writing st uh, some tracks as well for, for people to hear how the whole thing works together um, but there we go enjoy thanks for watching